Game of Thrones and the Warhammer universe are more similar than you might initially give them credit for. Everyone's dying all the time in a grim dark reality and, for today's purposes, have factions that are known for particular stereotypes and symbology. So in my quest to prove that George R.R. Martin is a closeted Warhammer fan, I'm going to find out the equivalent 40k faction for the houses and orders from Game of Thrones. Some of which may seem weird at first, but once we get into them we'll make way too much sense. First up is House Greyjoy. The Iron Man of the Iron Islands exist to reeve and sack. Pillagers at heart, they aren't particularly interested in any sort of long-term planning to a meaningful end, besides being able to get more loot. A pirate's life for me, laddie. The only thing that interests the Ironborn is who has plunder and how do they get their hands on it. Ideally, while splitting a few heads in the process. I can't think of a more apt comparison than that of the Orcs of 40k. Both factions' entire ideology is dead set on generating as much conflict as possible. They don't care about land or titles, establishing a kingdom, or furthering some political agenda, just who's the biggest, meanest guy in town, and then following that guy to find a good scrap, even if the scrap is amongst themselves. This results in both of their societies being a weird sort of meritocracy, despite being entities of wanton destruction and chaos. Functioning under the assumption that the strongest leader will be the most well equipped to lead them to success in raiding or war parties. All members of an orc warband, or an ironborn crew, follow their leader by choice, as if they follow the baddest man in town, they will be led to high levels of success on the battlefield. A reward in itself for both of these factions. While the orcs are a bit more in it for the love of the game rather than what kind of loot they get out of the constant warfare that they encourage, if we wanted a more specific comparison, the Ironborn would be closest to the Bad Moons, as that race of orcs is particularly focused on their swag, although the Ironborn don't have money literally growing out of their faces. That said, their greed and focus on material wealth is an easy comparison to draw. This Warhawk culture has led both the orcs and Ironborn to become quite hated by the other members of their respective universe. Having a reputation for being violent and terrible, they have acquired a vilified status, and anyone to come into the sight of an orc warband or an ironborn crew will certainly know they are in for a bad time. But not quite as bad of a time as if they were to encounter our next faction, that being House Bolton of the Dreadfort. The Boltons have perhaps the most sinister reputation of any noble house. Powerful and terrifying, the Dreadfort is known to be a sanctum of torture and depravity, satisfying the vile desires of the sadists of House Bolton. So known are they for this practice that their house sigil is that of a flayed man. No one in the 40k galaxy is more similar to this family than that of the Drukhari or the Dark Elves. The Drukhari revel in enslavement and torture, and are sadistic in the extreme and have developed quite a reputation for it. Much like the Boltons, this reputation is used to strike terror and fear into those who oppose them. The Drukhari have been described as highly intelligent and devious to the point of obsession, reveling in the physical and emotional pain of others, a description that fits interchangeably with that of the Boltons. Another similarity we see is in their choice of residence. The Drukhari are unique amongst the 40k factions because they do not live on a settled world or worlds. Rather, the bulk of their population is concentrated in one foul city-state, the dark city of Kamora, a hub for the dark and vile practices they revel in. Much like the Bolton's castle of the Dreadfort, aptly named as a bastion of suffering and torment. Both of these factions are also known for their intelligent and measured strategies when it comes to warfare, relying not on vast numbers or superior firepower, but expert planning and tactics to win their battles. Coupled with their evil reputations, the Boltons and Drukhari are intimidating to an extreme. Further comparisons can be drawn to the Dark Elves' rivalry with the Eldar, their non-corrupted counterparts. This being similar to the conflict between the Boltons and the Starks, embodying a battle between good and evil, minus the psychic powers and dark god of depravity. Speaking of the Starks, next we'll visit Jon Snow on the Night's Watch and discuss their best comparison. The Night's Watch is tasked with defending the Seven Kingdoms from the horrors beyond the Wall, which can range from wildlings all the way up to a race of the dead literally coming to end humanity as we know it, a highly hierarchical military organization. This is practically a one-to-one -one comparison to the Astra Militarum or the Imperial Guard. The Militarum serves as the Imperium of Man's primary military force and first line of defense from the myriad threats which endanger the existence of the human race, tasked with defending humanity from the dark horrors of the galaxy. Horrors which much of humanity itself has very little concept of. You know, this is starting to sound awfully familiar. 
Both fill the role of being humanity's sword and shield in the darkness. Your life isn't worth much, you're in all likelihood doomed to die at your station, with no one to remember you for it. The only place this one gets a little frayed is the Militarum relies on horde tactics to drown its enemies, and the Watch is plagued with manpower issues. That aside, the job these factions fill in their respective universes couldn't be more similar. They even share similarities in their fighting style, with heavy emphasis on encampments and artillery, with a wall being equipped with defenses including wooden ramps for dropping stone, ice, and barrels of burning oil, ballista and catapults strong enough to kill giants, and a massive bladed pendulum that runs along the wall with tremendous force, sweeping away any climbers known as the scythe. While the Militarum is more advanced with its implementation of these tactics, opting for a good old-fashioned mortar strike, the similarities make for an easy comparison. This next one is a little weird, but stay with me, it will start to make more sense as we go. House Clegane is a vassal house of the Lannisters. Originally the Kennel Masters, they were elevated to knighthood and now do much of the dirty work for House Lannister. Sir Gregor Clegane, better known as the Mountain, being particularly sadistic. To me, the best analogy is the world eaters of the Chaos Space marine legions. The comparisons are more symbolic than practical, but there is a lot of them. Firstly, the World Eaters used to be the Warhounds when they were loyalists, very similar to the Cleganes being kennel masters. The other main descriptors of the World Eaters that we have is that they were a collection of nearly inhuman monsters, being physically morphed by the warp being particularly sadistic and that the Legion is no longer united. Both Sandor Clegane, the Hound, and Gregor Clegane, the Mountain, are physically malformed in some way, the Mountain being enormous and the Hound having horrific facial burns. The Mountain was known to be one of the most sadistic men in the kingdom, regularly maiming and killing his own troops and servants, a parallel to the unhinged cruelty of the World Eaters. Along with this, when Sandor eventually abandons the Lannisters to strike his own way, this is in effect similar to the World leaders no longer being united. The similarities do end there, however, and Angron, the Primarch of the World Eaters, actually has a really cool backstory of being a slave warrior and escaping from captivity that is entirely different, but a compelling tale nonetheless. I thought the symbolic comparisons were really cool though, and worth taking note of regardless. Next, we have perhaps the most fitting comparison of all in that of House Stark. Really, it couldn't be anything but the Space Wolves. Aside from sharing a mascot, the ethos of these factions is spot on as well. Space Space Wolves are renowned for their anti-authoritarian ways and their embrace of their homeworld Fenris's savage barbarian culture as well as their extreme deviation from the Codex Astartes in the chapter's organization. Isolated as they are, none of the houses under the crown go their own way quite as much as the Starks in the North. While not strictly anti-authoritarian, the North keeps its own gods and in many instances, its own rules. The barbarian culture cannot be underestimated as well. While the Starks we see in the main Game of Thrones series Series are of a softer kind. Historically, the Starks are insane. This isn't to undersell the warrior culture modern Starks have, as Rob did defeat several armies much larger than his own in the War of the Five Kings. The Space Wolves live to fight, and death holds even less fear for them than their counterparts in other chapters, a sentiment shared directly with Cregan Stark when he came down with an army of Northmen sent specifically to die on the battlefield with no illusions of coming home. Both the Space Wolves and the Starks show intense loyalty to those they trust, and are as headstrong as they are fierce. The legends of the Space Wolves chapter are told on countless thousands of worlds, and the tales of Stark exploits are voiced as well, such as when Theon Stark drove the Andals out of the north and proceeded to counter-invade them, or when Roderick Stark won an island from the Ironborn in a wrestling match. All of these parallels seem a little too on the nose for me, and I think George may draw a bit more inspiration from 40k than he would like to admit, especially considering how he used to write sci-fi instead of fantasy. If you guys want me to do more comparisons of factions in another video, let me know in the comments, as well as how accurate you think I was in this one.